one. So this story took place at the beginning of 2019, so pre-COVID-19. Backstory. My best friend, let's call her June and I, used to work at a buffet-style restaurant together. She ended up quitting because she was physically unable to lift anything due to her pregnancy, so went back to work at the hotel we both currently work at. I quit a year later due to there being no work and scheduling conflict, so was out of job for a while. I was living with my then boyfriend at the time and we were splitting costs, so while he could take care of the cost himself, it was unfair to him to do so since I lived there part time. I ended up pleading to my best friend to put in a good word for me at the hotel because I was desperate for a job. The supervisor, Margaret, seemed very sweet at the time. She called me to schedule a time for an interview, but I was out of town when she called. The boyfriend and I decided to cut our trip to his parents short so I could make it to the interview on Friday. When I met the old manager, he pretty much hired me on the spot since my best friend spoke very highly of me, and he said normally he wouldn't do that. He ended up leaving a week before I started training at the hotel, and the front desk supervisor more or less took the role as manager until our temp manager came. Training. I started working at the hotel in October, but had my wedding at the end of the month, and was gone for Christmas and New Year's Eve, so my week of training was between all of this. It was only a couple of weeks into working, and I was still trying to grasp certain things when it came to the job. A lot of the instructions I was given were either made unclear, changed last minute, and or too dumb to learn in a week, which was basically all the training that was required before working alone. Three days back to back with a trainer to go over the system. One day telephone etiquette, basically how to get a high score when a certain company calls you. Two days where we did everything by yourself, but supervised, and at the end of the week we were thrown to the shark, sink or swim. Red flag number one. Margaret would like to throw this in my face a lot, saying, Trainer learned this faster than you, why can't you get this LP? As if I had a pocketbook of cheats to tell me how to fix my numbers and where to look to figure out how to fix them. I wasn't trained for that. Also note my trainer isn't even someone that had been there for more than a year or a professional. Not that it was a bad thing because she was awesome. But that left a lot of room for error or they would conveniently forget to tell me about certain aspects of the job. Trainer actually left, I think, about two or three months after I started, so she could get a job befitting her degree as a medical receptionist. Mistakes were made. There were several times I would make mistakes, i.e. I would accidentally charge or refund the wrong amount, would accidentally post something in the wrong spot and or make a mistake, putting something in the wrong room type that sold us out of those room types. So one thing you should know is that our system is very old and very flawed, but we work with what we have. Overall, the job is easy once you learn the basics. Red flag number two. I got yelled at a lot because of it though, and when I actually went to June for help with an issue, she was like, it's okay, this is an easy fix. Margaret was the complete opposite, which made it hard for me to go to her when I messed up, and I would try to fix the issue myself. Margaret usually encouraged this, but would usually end up making it worse. She had literally set me up to crash and burn. Work dress code. So I have to say, I am not the type of person who dresses up and does my makeup for work, except for a few occasions when I actually want to. This, however, in no way means I look like a slob, but I tend to dress with what I'm comfortable with. We used to have uniform shirts that we would wear during the weekdays, but during the weekend, we could wear whatever we want. Back when Margaret was here, she would get in the habit of telling me to unbutton my blouse a little, as a way to get me to loosen up. I am in no way conservative and most days don't mind showing a little cleavage, but not at work where guests do not know the concept of boundaries. She would also comment on my lack of makeup and me not styling my hair. My hair is usually in an updo of sorts, but most commonly in a bun, because I got in the habit of tying my hair up at the restaurant. Red flag number three. This was something she would comment on commonly. She made it so much about my appearance and my actual job that it made me extremely uncomfortable. It irritated me because the same standards were not asked of my male colleagues, who have big, untamable beards, at times, and look rather intimidating. It kind of hurts pretty much being told you will be more attractive if you put on makeup, or that I'm uptight because of how I wear my hair. Scheduling conflicts. Margaret would try to put me on the schedule even though she knew I would be out of town. 
So normally you wouldn't get time off when you're new, but I made it a point to the old general manager that I already had predetermined plans for the holidays before being hired. He told me to write them down and he would make sure I would get them off since we're pretty slow around these months anyways. I did what was asked and after he left, I would constantly fight with Margaret that these days that I requested were already pre-approved by the old general manager. We were in between managers most temporary, until we got the more permanent new manager, Matt. I know time off isn't always guaranteed, but there were certain times where I would work my butt off for months so I could save time off to take a break from my time for a week, but also asked to put me on a certain day even though it was my scheduled day off and I wasn't allowed to change my mind if something came up, i.e. a surprise date, my house catching on fire, that's a story for another time, etc. Temper Flares Margaret had a bit of a temper. The longer I worked at the hotel, the worse she became. She would constantly try to pit my co-workers against each other and or pick favorites. She would make fun of us and belittle us behind our back to other co-workers. She was just an overall nasty person. She actually told my co-worker Lynn I was stupid and slow. She called my other co-worker Stephanie a little bitch. Literally no one wanted to be around this woman, including Matt. Every time she came into work, unless she were at the desk, they would hide from her. I got so fed up with her attitude that I ended up quitting my job temporarily until she was fired later on, for multiple reasons. At the time when I quit, I did so for my mental health, because every time she was around, she made my anxiety worse. She actually tried to manipulate me into staying after telling her multiple times that I was sure about my decision. Aftermath. But what really took the cake, and I wasn't even a part of this, this woman would go into screaming fits, especially towards guests. One day, I guess the stress of the job finally caught up with her and she blew her gasket. She actually attacked one of my male co-workers, Kyle, and was slamming the door against his body. All in front of a guest. This was the last and final straw. The best part was that it was all caught on the security cameras. All while this was going on, each of us emailed the HR department with our experience, while gathering all the evidence to get her fired. My email went something like this. Good evening, HR. My name is What Fiery Hell Is This Zero. I'm a former employee with the hotel. I recently quit my job and put in my two weeks' notice on March 30th, 2019, and left on April 12th, 2019. During my employment, I was degraded and humiliated both to my face, behind my back, and in front of co-workers as well as guests by my front desk supervisor. My front desk supervisor told several of my co-workers I was stupid and slow. My supervisor continually tried to mess with my hours and work schedule. To make me work when they knew I was going to leave town. Purposefully. The stress and overwhelming amounts of anxiety due to their unprofessionalism is the reason I quit my job. When they were at work, if they were in a bad mood, everyone would steer clear and or hide if they could. They made the environment extremely hostile and made up rumors and pit other employees against each other. I had offered during my two weeks to stay on to train my replacement, but after my two weeks came, I could no longer stay. It hurt me to leave because I really loved my job, but due to the constant negativity and feeling of dread going into work, I could no longer stay. My supervisor would try to guilt me into staying and even put me on the schedule after telling her multiple times that my last day was the 12th. I had to literally give my stuff to other employees because I didn't want to step foot back in there while they were there. I do not want this to continue. My health declined due to the stress of being there. The employees there are a great team who need a better supervisor. I spoke with my manager about the situation and how I would come back if things changed and he agreed to let me come back. But I cannot come back if things remain the same. I kept in contact with several of my co-workers and Matt to keep tabs on the situation. They all wanted me to come back, especially Matt because he saw how extremely hard working I was. He was extremely disappointed when I asked him how to put in my two weeks notice because I've never done one before. I actually talked to him over the phone before Margaret was let go and told him that the real reason I quit was because of Margaret. I told him I was willing to come back if things changed or she was gone. I didn't feel comfortable working underneath her. Two, a little background. 
I was working front desk at a hotel which had a sister hotel about 500 meters away. We actually have shared departments for both hotels. Example, maintenance, laundry, human resources and reservations. We even share staff when needed. So very close to each. Story. Just a normal afternoon shift when I had a gentleman inquire about staying for a few nights. I told him the cost plus the incidentals. $50 per night on a card hold. Or $100 per night cash on top of the room cost. This is standard for our whole worldwide brand. He said he was going to go out and get some cash and come back. He also asked if I could hold his bag behind the desk for him while he does so. Which is normal and I don't mind doing it so I tagged it and gave him the slip. Now through our interaction I just had a feeling about it and didn't press the booking. We had plenty of his room type and I was going to wait till he came back with the cash. I went on a break and handed it over to my DM as we still had his items. The guest came back while I was away and didn't book the room my feeling was correct. Didn't think much about him until after this, a couple days later, when we were having a combined training between the two hotels. I was talking to some of the restaurant girls from the sister hotel, and they were telling me about this guest that is currently having lunch at their hotel with a prostitute, and that he has been doing the same thing every day with a different one. I was like ready for some gossip after that and asked some questions. I realized this was the same guest that I had talked to a couple days ago. I told them that as well. I went back to my front office team and told them everything. During this we somehow gave him a nickname, Mr. Schnitzel, I'm still not sure why, and had a good laugh as guess crazy behavior is what keeps us entertained. Again, fast forward a couple of days, and guess who has come over and tried to book a room with us, Mr. Schnitzel. Again, we repeat the process, cost, incidentals, etc. He now needs to get cash out again, he says he will come back. And can he leave something behind? Me being the amazing receptionist I am, I put out my hand to collect whatever it is. And he places a black leather sex whip in my hand. He turns away and leaves before I can even process anything. I walk out the back and fling this thing as far as I could. And proceed to hand sanitize my whole body. My manager looks at me like I'm crazy and I explain everything. He proceeds to call the sister hotel and ask why he has come over here now. Turns out he charged everything to the room at the sister hotel, lunch, drinks, anything you can think of, except the prostitutes, and walked out without paying. And no one on their side took the incidentals to cover it. They have already called the cops. We called the cops to tell them which direction we saw him go. They arrested him. And we had his sex whip in our back office for months. Until it mysteriously vanished one day. 3. So if you're still working or not working, you know shit is rough. I don't want to dedicate paragraphs to explaining why this obviously isn't normal. Could have been prevented, etc. The short version is we had to furlough a bunch of people including the housekeeping manager and supervisors. With other managers replacing line level staff while doing their job. Processes are breaking down, we are basically just cleaning enough rooms for new guests and any possible sales. Due outs haven't really been checked for a few weeks other than when we clean them. So shit gets super messed up with not having the correct clean room types. Selling more than we expected and I break down all the issues to the GM, insist we check every room because I'm sure we have like 20 rooms sitting clean that we just don't know and no one is checking. There is an issue with punching rooms clean on the phone, but this company just took over. So we find a room occupied that shouldn't be. We enter, but housekeeping says they asked for towels in the hallway. I start investigating. Maybe the front desk screwed up. No, a key hadn't been made for that room since April, and it was for a one-night stay. Even if we screwed up, they would have a key, right? So we talk through the possibility of a missing master no one has reported, because they aren't working to notice it. Room being left open and someone sneaking in, an employee abusing. We don't want to look like fools to one of the few guests we have because it obviously doesn't make sense. So we stealth read the lock. No key has been used on the room since the last guest, but every day registers as opening and closing. 
We are fairly certain there are two people in the room alternating leaving so they don't get locked out. Since we don't actually know if it is the previous cast, maybe a friend they left in the room, someone snuck in, we call the police to join us in knocking. The police stand to one side of the door so they can't be seen and we knock as security. At first, no one answers, but we can hear them inside. Finally, they start talking through the door to us. I'm sorry, but we don't have anyone registered to this room. Oh, I reserved it through a third party. This is my room. Finally, convince her to come out to help us figure out what's going on. In a very kind way. And then she sees the cops and she's like, oh, fuck. My GM is a really chill, but very savvy guy. He's been in this business all of his life and worked his way up from restaurant server to chef to ops to GM. He has a really soothing thick accent that is kind of sing-song. Mind you, we know they're scamming us, but he tells her, Oh, don't worry. They aren't here for you. They're here for us. See, your room has been empty in our system for 15 days. So we had no idea who could be in that room. Come on, let's sort this out. You don't need to worry about them. So we start walking to the front desk, but the cops stay with our chief engineer. And again, she's like, well, if it's okay, why aren't they leaving? Her boyfriend is still in the room. Like it's nothing, he tells her. Oh, they're just staying with the chief engineer. Let's go see what's going on. He again explains we don't have anyone in the room while we're walking, and she says, well, her boyfriend is paying for it. Again, totally like it's the chillest thing, he casually says, well, we read the lock, and no, you don't have a working key. You didn't think it was weird your boyfriend didn't have a key? He says so casually and not attacking, she doesn't even know what to say. So we got to the front desk and play the double check game. Oh no, you definitely only paid for one night. Before she can react, he says, Oh, I want to help you. Instead of these $70 a night you paid for the first night, we'll do $50 a night, a big discount. You guys get us the money, we can take the police out of here and forget about all this. Mind you, we were planning on pressing charges and barring, possibly trying to collect, but all of that is such a waste of time if they will just pay. She asked, Do we have to leave if we pay? I might need another night. I'm guessing she's been evicted before. GM says if you pay for your current nights and any more nights in advance, we are good. But you have to pay. She asks if she can get money from her room. And she gives us a whole $130 in cash. Starts calling people and Grandma comes to pay. The police leave before that because she is being super cooperative. She tells Grandma the same story about the boyfriend paying and Grandma calls her out in front of us. You thought he was paying? With what money? We have Grandma sign her life away and everything possible and get $750 for a room we had no idea was occupied. To their credit on that, they managed to get housekeeping twice while not registered, just by asking in the hallway. So yeah, in this case, no one got evicted or went to jail or acted crazy. We got our money, lack of controls was tested, and things were learned. 4. I was an operations manager for a national park campground and beach resort for about five years. Year 1. Guest checked in to two RV spaces and a cabin. Upon checkout, said she paid cash for everything, over $1,500. She seemed normal, so we took her word for it and questioned the front desk agent. She had been there for years, and stealing that amount is a bold move. No further action other than the guest didn't pay, and she made reservations for next year. Same setup, peak week. Year two, came and checked in. Same situation at checkout. Paid cash, no record, and same front desk agent. No other missing cash issues at any point in time between stays. We worked out some sort of arrangement since she didn't have a receipt. And she was willing to pay a small percentage of the bill. Noted her account of both situations. She made reservations for the following year, same peak rates. Year 3. I personally checked her in and she used a credit card. Came back to the front desk a couple days into her stay trying to argue that she was promised a lower rate. Gave her a AAA discount and she left. 
came back to complain about her accommodations and blatantly asked for comp nights. At this point, I clued in my GM, who was beyond supportive, and she said absolutely not, she gets nothing. Gas checked out early and stormed off, did not make reservations. Year 4. I was going through the check-ins for this same week in advance, and noticed a couple reservations with some odd notes. Don't remember the notes, but they were strange enough for me to research further. New guest profile, as if it was their first stay. But the notes were specific enough that it clearly wasn't their first stay. Looked at the information and searched the phone number in the system. It was her. Added all the notes to this reservation to call me when she was checking in, and I will deal with her myself again. Told my GM she was back and we were ready for anything. She came to check in again, hinted that she was going to pay cash but not right now. Told her I will not be accepting cash from her because of previous issues. She became irate. Then she started lecturing me about how the rate was too high, and in her email, she had a promotion for cheaper rates, like over 75% less than her rate, which is impossible. Told her not to even bother searching because I am the one who approved promotions and there are none. She then called me a liar, so I called my GM down to witness. And let me say, my GM is so cool and is not in the least bit going to put up with her BS, so my boss stood back and let me argue with her. It went something like this. Ma'am, you are a scammer. Year one, you lied and accused my front desk agent of being a thief, which she is not, and you paid nothing. Year two, you lied and paid almost nothing. Year three, you lied looking for free things. Now this. You have two options at this point. You check in and I charge your card now for everything, or you leave immediately. You pick. She demanded to speak with the GM and my boss chimed in and said, Oh, I'm right here. Those are your options, give us any more issues, and we'll call the police to remove you from the property. We were all hoping she would just leave. Nope, she chose to check in. After three days, came up to check out early, sent her on her way, figuring she would never be back. Within a week, found more reservations for her to stay next year again. When I accepted a promotion to go to another property, the last thing I did was write a book on her profile, and any associated profiles of all the situations. She is still, every year, coming up with crazy situations to get money back. Same GM is still there, so she tells me about it all. We get taken advantage of all the time at the front desk, but I don't put up with it. I realize that I may have been semi-unprofessional, but as someone responsible for a budget and reliant on all the revenue to make it through slow season, I don't put up with it. Wrote this all with the hope that any front desk person who reads this knows that there are managers out there like me who have your back. 5. I worked the night audit for nearly 20 years, so there are many, many nights that just blend together. This one night sticks out as one of the funniest. Friday evening, my wife woke me up at 6pm for dinner. She had made meatloaf, mashed potatoes, gravy, peas and rolls. Yummy. Sitting down to dinner as a family with our three children was important, as it gave me a chance to hear about the children's day at school. As my wife does the dinner dishes, my job is to bathe the boys. Story time, bedtime, hop in the shower and get myself ready for work. One of the last things I do before leaving for work is check my emails, as my manager will shoot me a message to warn me about any problems. My sweet daughter, age nine, came out of her room. Daddy, I can't sleep unless I can hug you deeply. Oh, huh, melting heart. I wrap her up, hug deeply. She strokes my head, I rub her back. Good night, Daddy. Please have a good night. Pancakes for breakfast. And she floats away. She's a total daddy's girl. Wife sends me off at 10 p.m. with my travel mug of coffee. I got to work. Nothing major happened. Normal check-ins, late-night pool dwellers, paperwork come out correct. Shocking, but okay. Passed the torch at around 7 a.m. and headed home to pancakes, sausage, and scrambled eggs. As the children and I were veggie in front of cartoons, the phone rang. Jay, can you come back in? Mr. Thompson is here and he needs to talk to you. The whole way back, I'm wondering why the third in charge of the whole North America needed me. I was just a lowly auditor. Eight minutes later, I'm walking into the lobby, catching quizzical looks from the first shift, and I can hear John and Mr. Thompson in the back office, laughing. I knock, enter, 
John and Mr. T look like the cartoon characters I had just left entertaining my children. Red face and sweaty in weird places. Uh, Jay, will you look at this piece of CCTV and tell us if you notice anything out of the ordinary? Mr. T presses play. The image is of the front desk. Above my right shoulder, you can just make out my right ear. As I step to the right, arranging the reports in a line, the back of my head comes fully visible. There, staring back at the camera, is a smiley face my sweet daughter drew in my bald spot. Yep, I showed back up with the smiley face still there. I went home and went for a shower before going to bed. From then on, I didn't leave for work unless my wife did a bald spot inspection. Hey everybody, Halfraiser here, and thank you very much for listening to Kowahu number 39. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories and sent in stories for use in this video. If you yourself have a story you'd like to share, then you can send it along to kingofthecities at gmail.com. Uh, I got slightly distracted there by an email offering me a woman. Hang on a sec. Okay, I haven't been on this site for like three years. Why is it still sending me emails? And for the record, she might be 25. That's probably a little young for me. Sorry, Laura, I'm going to have to break your heart. Right. Where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, if you have a story, send it along to kingofthecities at gmail.com. Uh, that is on the end screen of every video. And can also be found in the description of every video. Just about every video. Okay, I think it might be time to wrap things up there. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves.